Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm making a, uh, a dummy engine to look like the Villiers Junior engine. And uh, basically the electric motor, which you've seen previous, sits in this hole here. I've carefully filed and drilled all the mounting positions. And uh, this is the motor here. So you can see that's going to fit through there. So the motor case will be on the rear. So what I'm doing here is I've made a little uh, bushing. Now this is a 20 millimeter electric electrical conduit. Then I've got some silicon rubber pipe and I've cut it to size and I've slid that inside. Then I've hammered some 10 millimeter internal diameter pipe inside of the silicon rubber so you basically you can see the steel just sticks out the internal 10 mil internal bore sticks out just a little bit and the rubber is to give it just a little bit of cushioning and the mounting point should be from underneath here coming down and have a bolt running through there so the plan is that I might be able to do a, ta uh, a, a chain tensioner by swiveling the engine up and down, rotating it on that back bushing point. Yeah, do you follow that? Now, the other thing I'm working on is uh, the rear of the engine. Uh, now, basically, the electric motor case sits in this area here. Yeah? So, what I'm making here is a dummy. Um, engine shape and uh, if we were to look at the proper Villiers junior engine I do have some photographs of kicking around here possibly the second uh, right there's it there's it sat in the frame now this piece here is actually part of the exhaust manifold. The exhaust manifold comes down, <coughs> I think, on both sides of the engine and then comes down to the exhaust system which sits under the engine and then has a tailpipe which runs off and goes to the rear by the, by the rear wheel. Uh, now, uh, where's my picture of the engine? There we go, there's the actual Villiers junior engine. Now, I'm not trying to do this in great detail, I'm not going to go crazy about this, but basically what I'm du duplicating is a view looking down like so, um, in a very simple, boxy sort of shape. Now, what I'm doing here at this rear end is I've put a 20 mil steel band around the edge to thicken it up. See, you see the picture down there? So basically I've thickened that up and I'm considering inserting some wood in that area to bulk it out like that does there, putting some wood, wooden um, uh, planking into the cutting it shaping it with a spoke shave or whatever to get that sort of angle to it then painting well skimming the whole thing in some aluminium um, body filler and then painting the whole engine in aluminium paint and I think it could look quite good now the top end of the engine uh, where the uh, where the piston sits inside of um, with the fins on and everything what I'm actually doing there is I'm shrinking it down a little bit from how the original one looks um, possibly because I've got some dimension wrong and I'm and I'm not sure exactly what the dimension is but 
rather than worrying and trying to correct it, measuring every single aspect, I've decided I will just make the engine block slightly shorter. So what I've done is I've cut some aluminium discs. These are around, let's see, let's give a measurement. Measurement. I've just cut these out with tin snips. They're 11 centimeters across, yeah? Uh, so that's radius is 11 centimeters. And uh, what I've done inside, in between them, is I've cut little polycarbonate washers using a hole saw. You know the sort that goes in an electric drill, so you've got a 6 mil electric drill through the middle, uh, a bit that goes through the middle, and then it cuts out rings. So basically these are 6 millimeter polycarbonate, they're actually off old scrap telephone box panelling, which I still have loads of fortunately. Um, it's vandalised polycarbonate. So. Uh, um, I've got to clean the plastic off the other side of these. So that is going to be placed on the end of this. Now this is a piece of um, box section steel uh, which I've cut and reshaped. You can see it was actually uh, electri electrical um, wiring conduit. Um, let's see, bow. I think it's probably about 80 mil uh, electrical box conduit. Uh, I think I've got more of it. Here you go. This is the stuff. So what I've done is I've cut that down and I've made it 40 mil deep here. Um, and then I folded another 15 millimeters in basically just put this in in the vise and I've used pieces of angle iron uh, to hold it in the vise jaws and then I've I've hammered it so that I get that shape and this end here I folded that over and you can see what I've done there on the other side so this is the front of the engine here so you can see I've um, and I've welded it all up around on the corners and I'm probably going to be bolting this so I'll drill some holes in through the other side two, two, two bolts in this flange I've made in there two bolts in there on this side and two bolts on the other side through to the other side and I'll put nuts on in there and what I might do is I'll weld the bolt heads inside here if I can get my welder in so they're captive inside there so if I want to strip this part off the back plate for the engine for the, for the motor mount the dummy engine so um, I can strip it down easily so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a six mil hole in the end here then that's going to be threaded into there then as a crafty sort of top for the engine let's have a look let's have a look at the picture um, in fact we'll look at it on the, while, it, while it's mounted in in the um, the frame. So what we have is we have this sort of um, conic not, where's conical word, this curved top on the top of the engine. So I was thinking what can I use to do that? So I went uh, and had a look in the local shops in a pound shop and uh, you can buy these stainless steel ladles for a pound so what I'm going to do is I'm going to saw that off across there, drill a single hole, six mil hole in the end here, and that is going to be on the top of there. Then I'm going to drill a hole in the side here and try and find a spark plug. And I'm going to weld a spark plug on the inside there so that that's the top end of my engine. So it should look um, it should look okay. So I'm going to get on with that and show you how it all um, comes into shape. 
Okay, this is how the dummy motor's coming on. Uh, you see, as I said, it's like a figure eight shape. And there's the motor on the back, and that's a piece of um, power trunking which I've cut and reshaped. And that's the ladle on the end there, and then some uh, aluminium washer type things, discs that I've cut out. I'm going to put an extra one on, um, make it six as it should be on the original. So there's the motor sticking out there, and um, basically that pan that's on here is going to be cut down to 40 millimeters deep, and that's going to be fitted on the side here over these four pan head screw heads. Right, so the next thing is the motor mount. So the motor mount is, as I've shown there, I've welded a piece of uh, 20, 22 mil uni, uh, sorry, um, conduit, galvanized conduit in there. And I've welded that rim around the edge and the rim tapers off towards the front. You see how I've done it there? Yeah, so you get the idea. So it looks like it's quite thick. It looks like it, it's a proper engine block and gearbox and so on. So what we have is we then have a 10 mil bolt which runs through there. And that fits in to this uh, motor mount which is fitted underneath here. Yeah. So in order to fit this, you can see what how I've made this. It's just a piece of angle with um, a U-bracket welded into it, welded the front and back edges. So that sits under there, like so. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to plug weld. I'm going to drill two holes, which may be about up to half an inch in diameter, maybe 10 mil. I think 10 mil should work and I'm going to stick that underneath, clamp it with some vice grips, mole grips, whatever you want to call them grips, stick that there, make sure that the motor is mounted in the correct position, chain tensions and everything seem to be good, then I'm going to just plug weld it with the MIG welder through the top there and hope that that's going to do a good job. The um, reason I'm doing it this way is if you look at a photograph. There is the top. Now it seems to be that they riveted it, but uh, I'm not gonna go riveting it or screwing the bracket on, I don't think. So I'm just gonna go for plug welding it. And if it cocks up, I can basically put a drill through the plug weld and drill it out again. Okay, so I'm just going to get on with that. I'm not going to show you me doing it, I don't think. I'm just going to do it. Okay, sorry for that noise, 
But that is basically the uh, recording of an original World War II uh, Villiers, uh, sorry, Villiers powered uh, well bike running in Normandy um, a few years ago. So um, what I've done is I've captured that off the web. I've turned it into an MP3 fi file and I've fitted it into this little um, uh, little mp3 player. These are on eBay for around three pounds each and they'll work from 12 uh, 12 volts up to about 36 volts So nice wide voltage range. So perfect. They've got a 3 watt output Hence I've gra grabbed this out of an old pair of PC speakers 4 ohm 3 watt speaker and um, Basically, uh, it's going in the side of my engine. Now, at a later date, if I wish, I can put a little amplifier in and change the speaker out and get a little bit more volume out of it. But um, I might be able to get a bit more volume out of the um, MP3 file, yes. If I uh, increase the volume in the, uh, in the editor, I might get the volume up a, bit, a touch more. Now, uh, this is basically my engine components. This is the back plate for the engine and uh, here's the speed controller. This is a 24 volt Chinese speed controller. You can see down there. These cost about £15 on eBay together with the twist grip throttle controller for controlling um, brushed DC motors and this is one of the motors these cost around 50 to 60 pounds on ebay this is the 24 volt 250 watt motor with a just under 10 to 1 uh, reduction gearbox mounted on it so there you go 24 volts uh, 250 w there so that's that. That is going to be mounted here in this little hole I've cut. Hence the shape there. Yeah, that little projection that mounts into there. So the motor section mounts on the back, just in this area here. Then what we have is we have the uh, dummy cylinder head with little bits of piping I've welded on. This piece is uh, is some conduit piping, one inch, and that's welded on the bottom, and that's going to be for the exhaust pipe. And this here is the, is the uh, basically the inlet for um, a dummy uh, carburetor that I'm knocking, knocking up out of some copper piping. You can see I've soldered it all up, similar to how the original ones were done. This top end is just made out of aluminium discs. This is um, a ladle I got from a pound shop and I sawed the handle off. I've welded a bolt on the side to make a dummy spark plug. Bit of plastic on it, a nut, and I'm gonna have a cable coming off that, going through to the top of my uh, um, engine mounting just there and it's going to have a knot in the back so basically the cable's going to go through the rear end there and come out and just be knotted in there so my power cables for the motor are going to come through this rubber grommet here yeah which is on the back of the engine and then they're going to pass through this grommet here and come to the speed controller where I've got motor on there. So I've got motor, bat, so that's the main power in. Then I've got some uh, wires around on here which are for the throttle control. There's a plug with three wires. There you go. This one here is for the grip, twist grip three wires, blue, black, red. Um, I'm going to use a couple of wires which come off this then to power this little amplifier. 
as I say, this uh, this little lamp is three watt output, little MP3 player, I should say, rather than amplifier. You can say you uh, you can see it takes a TF card and a USB stick, and that's going to be mounted in this hole here, looking upwards like so. So I'll be able to put my hand down between the uh, the frame on the bike approximately around there and I'll be able to control the mp3 uh, player uh, what comes out of it I'm probably also going to fit a power switch somewhere in the casing just a small toggle switch so um, the bike's looking quite good I've got the pannier boxes mounted up on it here there's the twist grip throttle control and there's the wires so I've got an ignition uh, switch which is the yellow and white uh, wires and then there's the throttle control wires yes yeah, so uh, I'm going to be getting on with that little job next wiring all of this up and assembling it okay okay I've been having a little bit of fun with this thing or not fun I should probably say first of all I ordered this uh, 16 amp hour lithium uh, battery over AliExpress, Alibaba Express and uh, it arrived earlier this month and I haven't got round to actually testing it on a load I, char I put it on the charger and it appeared to charge up but I didn't actually test the output of it and it doesn't appear to work so uh, I've put in a dispute but due to it being past the dispute deck time, which was a few days after it arrived with me, I don't know whether I'm going to get anywhere in the refunds. But these are the two lead acid batteries which came with the old electric kid scooter. And um, yet again, I'm using something else off, uh, off my £10 purchase. Uh, so that's the wheels and now the batteries so I've hooked it all up and I've also had a little bit of uh, confusion with this speed controller which I got off eBay from China uh, basically this was the instructions which uh, were sent to me and I started hooking all the all the wires up speed controller um, twist grip was was easy enough um, basically three wire plug to three wire plug but when it came to the key switch here it had uh, yellow and white so I just presumed that it was going to go to the yellow and black uh, wire which is down there so I've had it hooked up to that because it didn't tell me anything about the yellow and black wire on here so I've had it hooked to that and I've just gone out poking around on eBay at other sales and I found another picture and it indicated that I should be connecting the yellow and black to the blue and red. Basically the key switch on these controllers is blue and red. Now when you look on here, I didn't hook it up to this because it says blue and red is electric door lock. Now that would sort of imply to me that it was something to do with locks on doors, not the ignition key switch, which you have on the twist grip. So that should be basically key switch, not door lock. So I uh, will be contacting the guy and telling him to change his diagram because I've now hooked it up and I can now turn this on and it tells me the battery indication on there um, saying it's fully charged 
it's all hooked up basically I've got the blue and white wires are coming out the speed controller are hooked up to the black and red which are hooked up to my motor here and I have the the, the key switch and the throttle connected and the coarse black and red are hooked up to my um, to my uh, battery and the rest of the wires are, are not worried about at the moment now I've got a load uh, sorry I've got um, uh, my amp meter and it's showing 0 0.3 of an amp current draw so there is a small current draw on that at the moment if I turn the key switch off it goes to zero so it's not pulling anything when the key switch is off which is cool so if I put it back on I can turn the throttle slightly and my wheel starts to spin motor is going so all looking good I'm showing just over just around half an amp there just spinning over with no load on this right if we start to spin it up a bit higher still not got to an amp but uh, yes uh, 1.5 amps the battery is not showing very good because they're old batteries right less than 2 amps with no load on the thing and it's down to 3 lights on there so um, I'm getting there now I'm, I reckon that's ticking along pretty well so uh, just a little bit of information about the control and about the wiring there okay uh, one other little point of note um, is I've hooked up the mp3 player into what is probably let's see red and black well it's one of the uh, it's either the brake light or indicator light circuit f uh, output from the speed controller so basically they will only come on when the key switch is turned so now I've got it all working I can give you a demo when you turn this on you get a little bong comes out the mp3 player then Yeah, so that sounds okay. I I, I could uh, live with that. 
so I know that these batteries will fit in these pannier boxes so you don't really need lithiums because they will go in there so what I need to do is mount some uh, grid mesh, one inch grid mesh inside the pannier boxes and I can just cable tie these batteries in and I should be going I'm just doing a little job on the dummy carb what I've done is I've stuck a um, an M6 wing nut inside here and I've screwed this screw into it with some flats on the side you know it's basically a gutter bolt I've screwed that into the uh, into the M6 wing nut then what I've done is I've filled the carb up with polymorph plastic that's this stuff that comes in little beads uh, cool polymorph uh, 500 gram I've used it before and other stuff so basically I've put hot polymorph plastic in and you boil it in a pan your, your polymorph plastic as I'm uh, doing here now what I'm doing next is this is a bit of an experiment I'm hoping that it works out okay I've, um, I'm sticking a little air filter that I had kicking around in the, uh, in the garage. I'm sticking it on basically, I'm putting polymorph plastic inside the air filter. Um, basically because I don't believe the polymorph plastic will, will pour out through the gauze on the filter. But hopefully it will melt inside there. Um, so what I probably should do is put a little bit of water inside there. In fact, my lens is now steamed over. There we go. I'm just very crude. Right, okay, so you basically see I'm, I'm boiling polymorph inside a air filter in some water. And hopefully it's going to melt inside there and then I can just push that screw head into the polymorph set the whole thing on and that will set inside it basically because I'm trying to keep the space really sh short on this dummy carb I've got no neck on the back of the carb where, the, where it had rubber to put a, a jubilee clip round, so I can't do it. I'm trying to keep it all small and tight. I could have just drilled a hole right through the front of the air filter, but it just looked a bit crude, um, sticking a hole right through it. So uh, I'm hoping this is gonna work out. So basically, see this moves around still. So what I'll be able to do is unscrew the air filter out of the M6 wing nut trapped inside if this works out. Anyway, we'll see what it's like when I've, uh, when I've had a go at it. Okay, not gonna video it doing, doing it because uh, it's gonna be quite messy. Right, so that's it pushed on. Um, basically, just gotta let that cool down now. Uh, just wiping off some of the oil that's leaked out the filter. And uh, that should set nice and solid. Okay. Now, here's for the final details on the engine. You can see the carburetor um, air filter, which I fitted. Um, has worked that really well. I imagine I could probably unscrew that if I try, but at the moment I'm not going to bother trying. Um, so it's worked out quite nice. Stainless steel gauze inside there. None of the um, the low temperature um, polymorphic plastic came out through the filter, so that worked perfectly well. It's really rigid. Um, again, I've used a bit of polymorph um, to set this uh, dummy carburetor cap on, and that's just a bit of um, 
bike flex which I take, took off one of the BMX bikes and I've fitted that there and I've cable tied it just down and out the way just to make it look like it's a functional carburetor. Now um, the gearbox or the electric motor on this uh, dummy Villiers Junior motor I've made uh, that's still painted black and I've not fitted any wood in around here as I suggested that I may do. I did suggest I would fit some wood in here and spoke shave it, shape, shape it and then cover it in car filler, aluminium filler, then paint it aluminium to fit in with the rest of the aluminium paint I have on the engine. Um, so, um, not done that as such, but um, other details which you will need to know is that um, I actually used all the wheels off the children's uh, pink bike to get this functioning. I've also changed the tyres so that they are proper spec tyres. Um, now, these are actually uh, Cheng Shen, I think it says, uh, nylons and they are <coughs> oh hang on let's have a look at the front wheels they are 2.50 dash 8s that's what they are called made by Cheng Shen and these tires are also fitted to invalid buggies type things and uh, mobility carriages um, as well as the same spec as the original well bike now you can see the front the forks with these tires on it's actually taking up much more of the space that I had available the sprockets which I've fitted to these wheels and the engine are both 13 tooth sprockets basically the motor 250 uh, watt motor gives 300 rpm from what I can remember so basically I wanted to get maximum rpm at the rear wheel so I managed to find from a dealer on eBay in France they were selling these sprockets with a 13 tooth to go on the motor and from dealers in China over eBay you can get a 13 tooth gear to mount on the rear. I couldn't find any collars which were the same right handed thread to lock my rear sprocket off with so I got a second uh, sprocket which is actually a 14 tooth sprocket just in case I wanted to change the spec and um, the gearing so I've, put, I've, I've tightened it up with a 14 tooth sprocket and if I feel it, it's coming loose I will use some uh, locking adhesive Loctite or something like that one of those products and that should hopefully stop it coming loose so that's essentially the bike uh, almost finished now one other point of note is that the wheelbase on um, a well bike is supposed to be measured from the wheel centre or hub centre to hub centre and they should be 99 centimetres so Not easy to do with a camcorder in one hand. Oh. No, no, no. Too small a tape, maybe. There we go. But basically, it is 99 centimeters. As close as I can get by measuring over this pannier tank. There you go. How's that? Perfection.
I've done a little bit of um, drive testing on this now um, up and down um, an old coach road so um, I, what I did work out was that um, it seemed to be quite underpowered uh, for what I've built because this bike is a heavy steel constructed bike frame and so on it's not made out of lightweight aluminium and um, the tires are quite heavy and they're fairly large okay they're not uh, 26 inch wheels like on a push bike but push bikes generally are pedal assisted so what i'm doing here is i'm creating something that is purely a um, electric motorcycle so it needs to have enough oomph in it to do what an electric what a, what a petrol motorcycle would do albeit scaled down slightly because at the end of the day i'm not going to be go able to go um 20 out on a 20 mile run on this thing it's purely really for short distance um uh, taken around at um uh, World War Two events, um, you know, just as a as a toy, really. Um, so, what I've decided to do is, um, I took out the original speed controller. Now, the original speed controller was designed for a 250 watt motor, which, sure enough, is what um, I have on the bike now. Um, the thing is that um, they are set for um, an amp rating. This speed controller here is actually at, rated at 250 watts and then it's uh, set at 21 plus or minus 1 amp. So basically it has a a current regulator in here which um, which is basically a 
uh, a load resistor and, they, and the circuit measures the voltage across a resistor which is generally a very low resistance a fraction of an ohm and then the voltage drop is measured across it by the internal circuitry and that is what governs the current limiting basically it uh, it will um, shut off the supply of current um, at 21 amps plus or minus an amp if you want to deliver a bit more current to your drive motor then what you want to do is you want to fit a higher wattage speed controller to it so what I've done I happen to have a 500 watt rated speed controller and I think that actually allows it to deliver more like around 30 amps I should take the cover off and show you it but the speed controller is just slightly larger than this one it still fits in, inside this nice large pan which I'm using here so there's no real issues um, having the speed controller mounted actually very close to the motor is quite a desirable thing and the wires which run to the batteries from here are not very long either they only have a short distance because I've got a battery in each of these pannier tank areas so there's no issues there but the other thing it's going to definitely need to be of any use is it needs some lipo uh, batteries um, I did get one from China over um, Alibaba Express but it was faulty this is the battery which I got over Alibaba Express from China and you can see it's marked up as a Panasonic 1600 milliamp it says 25.2 volts close enough to 24 um, yes, um, now this battery on its own, uh, you can see the physical size of it, I've shown it in other parts of the build uh, guide, and um, this battery here is actually lighter than one 7 amp per hour 12 volt gel battery. So if this had been functional, um, what I would have been doing is at this point I would have been sending off for a second one and putting one in each of the tanks you can see this battery will easily fit inside that tank um, you actually do have space if you wanted to be um, clever you could probably squeeze a third battery down inside between the two tanks and fit it down in there so you could have three of these things wired up in parallel now as far as I know you don't wire um, lipo batteries in series but it's okay to wire them up in parallel if I'm remembering remembering correctly so you can increase the amp per hour but generally not the voltage um, there probably is some way and some people will say oh no it's okay to connect them in series maybe it is but I'm purely going by what I've re read recently on a on a website someplace saying not to do it so where's this get me yeah so basically what I may be doing is cutting this battery up because Alibaba, or the sale, um, the seller on Alibaba is not replying to my messages and not offering me any form of refund. So I might be chopping all the plastic off this and stripping it down to see if I can diagnose the fault myself.
Now, the other thing which I desperately need to do on this is, now that the power is actually pepped up by allowing more current to the motor, um, I'm finding that the uh, chain is actually jumping and it's pretty obvious why, because I've got a lot of slack in the chain. And this is something I, I've been meaning to, to deal with um, and uh, not got around to it yet. Now, one way to remove slack out of this is obviously to back off the rear wheel a little bit further. But when I've built this, I've designed into it to use these little locking tab washers so that uh, it can't rattle loose. Um, so I quite like the idea of keeping these here and uh, not just backing the wheel off. Also, you can notice I would have to extend this plate a little bit longer in order to take a lot of chain tension out. So if you're going to design one of these, um, make it so that the slot on the rear wheel mounting is longer. Okay, so that's a little bit info. You can also buy for less than two pound a pair of adjusters which are very similar to what the original well bike has in that um, it's like a washer with a butt with a threaded length on it and you wind the nut at the back end and you can tension the chain back basically um, it has a device which cap which is uh, located over the back end of your sprocket mounting point and then by putting a spanner on the back you can take the tension up and wind your um, your axle your hub back against the rear of the mountings um, quite simple look it up um, now instead what I've, I'm opting for is I've chopped another piece off the um, the kids electric scooter and that is this um, self adjusting chain tensioner it's basically just a pulley on a spring loaded arm now on the kids bike it went in a similar position to say this here yeah and tension the chain up but um, I am going to try a different idea you can buy um, roller chain tensioners for say anything from £2.50 to £5 if you want a black one for some reason all the black ones are more expensive than the white pink or green ones uh, anyway I've already got this roller I'm not sure if it's got a bearing in there looking at it I don't know it may have a bearing I've not stripped it down yet one way or the other it uh, doesn't really matter it it r runs very smooth and it appears to be made out of stainless steel to me it probably not have had a lot of use uh, what I'm intending to do is mount it in this vicinity here right I've managed to make the little chain tensioner now you can see it's got a bit of adjustment in it, but um, isn't there's enough there? See, so uh, that's what I did in the end. I made a little piece of, uh, I cut a little piece of angle iron, and I welded it on like you can see there. So basically, I've got a, an M8 bolt going through from the other side which is down there with a uh, locking washer on it so basically I can just loosen that or tighten and retighten it and that gives me the adjustment to check to to tension this up but uh, if I turn it on now 
That's the MP3 player going. Give it a little bit of throttle. You can see the chain tension is now working brilliantly. So I'm going to give it, give it another little test ride just in front of my house around here to see what it's like. Yeah, that works quite well.